for a given course, there are target learning outcomes that we hope for our students to achieve. And along the way, there may also be targets that we hope to achieve as instructors, helping students to achieve those goals. So have your understandings of the learning outcomes in the courses you teach transformed because of the pandemic or the learning outcomes static and it's just really a, a way to get there? For a lot of the classes that I'm teaching, kind of depending on how you list those learning outcomes, some things are, are staying the same. I still need my students to know what a p-value is at the end of their stats class and kind of how to run through a hypothesis test. One thing that's changed a little bit is it used to be that you think about, okay, I need to teach them this list of things and to teach them, those are what I need to put on the board in lecture. That's what counts as being taught. But then as I'm moving things online and putting things on Moodle, then all of a sudden it's the, well, that's not actually true, right? If, if you do an assignment and you have to work through the concept and you have to kind of use that, that's interacting with the material more than me standing on a board or recording a video where you can passively watch it. And then it became a question of, if I'm thinking about the learning outcomes, it's not, these are the things that I taught and I put them on a test and I asked a question about it. It's what things did they really get to interact with and really work with in, in some, hopefully sometimes in depth way, some things will be just facts, but how did you really work with it? But do you have other insights? on maybe the way that you are helping your students achieve target goals? Uh, did, the, did the meaning of the learning outcome in your classes transform at all? So I guess in a, a couple of ways, I remember when I was first starting to teach online uh, last summer, uh, the pandemic sort of inspired me to try to come up with ways to make calculus and math relevant. I mean, we know of course it is, but this sort of gave a, an opportunity to show some first years, these were science students. So, you know, to put it right into their world, I made up a little assignment on, you know, the SIR model, just giving a little intro into differential equations and what are all these, you know, reproduction numbers, what do all these things mean that we're hearing about in the news? And even simple things like, you know, the logarithmic scale that would be talked about in the news. And does anybody really understand this? These are some really basic kind of calc one topics that we can talk about with our students. So that was one thing that I guess it wasn't technically a learning outcome of my course, but it, you know, it provide the pandemic provided an opportunity to kind of take some of these learning outcomes and apply them to the real world. Connecting old topics like linear algebra and calculus to modern things. Is that something that you try to do in your classes or is that not so relevant for you? It's something that I do to some extent. And I don't always necessarily go with the, I want to have the most up-to-date modern example, but something that at least is interesting and, and relevant in some way. Uh, for one of my courses, because I teach in the liberal education department sometimes, one of the favorite topics for kind of getting into the math mindset is looking at my numbers and playing around with kind of mathematics in, in that point of view. And I've spent, I don't know how many hours searching for current data sets for teaching stats, but still the Titanic data set is one of my favorites because at least it's a, we all have this cultural understanding of what went on, what was going on. And there's a bunch of statistics we can do with this actual real data. So it's, it's definitely a push to have real world examples with actual, I'm not just making it up, this is the actual numbers. Whether or not it's the, okay, this came out last year, but an, an interesting, useful story from 20 years ago, sometimes is better than the, okay, this is data from a study that came out two weeks ago, but it's kind of messy and isn't quite what I want, rather than the, here's a nice simple one from 1930 and we'll accept that it's out of date with the stats and the story still works. A lot of the really important mathematics that we work on was really built by natural philosophers who were trying to understand the world, you know, like geometry. And we don't play with satellite data. Like it is earth measurement like never before. And geometry classes aren't looking at satellite data very often. But climate change and all these other things are problems that are going to require solutions from people with mathematical thinking. So I have a very broad view of the mathematical sciences. 